Glory to Jesus Christ, Your Excellency, Reverend Fathers, brothers and sisters. I feel strongly discriminated because I was told that I will have only 10 minutes and I prepared my talk strictly for 10 minutes. But <laughs> you, this is a good news for you uh, also. Um, so my title is um, Between the Defense and Disillusion, the Catholic Option in the Context of the Contemporary Culture. I have put the word option instead of alternative into my title because I want to start this short presentation with mentioning of the book written by Rod Dreher, The Benedict Option, yet mentioned uh, by Father Rector. I'm not sure that, they d that, that this book is the most important religious publication of the last decade as it is sometimes presented, but I think but I think it is valuable, and not because of its content, but because of its influence on the wider discussion within the Catholic Church, but not only. After the Benedict Option had been presented, uh, there emerged the whole variety of different other options. How to live our lives as Christians in the context of the contemporary culture. Among the last options that I have noticed was the Kavasila option, named after the Byzantine saint Nicholas Kavasilas. It was presented by Greek Orthodox scholar, and the focus of this option was on the liturgy. I think it might be interesting for us Eastern Catholics too. The book of Rod Dreher was received was reviewed in the semi-official Vatican magazine La Civiltà Cattolica. I think it shows us that the issue of options became global. Uh, I need to notice that uh, this reaction was very critical uh, from the uh, La Civiltà Cattolica, but uh, the very case that um, it was reviewed in this magazine, I think it is very uh, significant. The starting point of the Dreher's approach is that the battle for the culture is over. It has been lost, and now our main, main task is to preserve what could be preserved and to defend what could be defended. Frankly speaking, this is not something new in the history of the Church. And Dreher himself refers to the period which prefaced the Dark Ages. But it is not new from another perspective. Such defensive position is something that belongs to the classical reactions of the human beings and we can find thousands of examples. In the context of the broad theme of our conference, we can argue that the nationalism is, has the same root as the defensive position of Rod Dreher. The main driving force of this posture is fear. Dreher is totally pessimistic. I think that he can't accept that our culture is not totally opposite to the Christianity. But the vocabulary of the contemporary culture consists a lot of concepts from the Christian vocabulary. Samuel Moyn, the professor of law at the Yale University, convincingly shows in his recent book, The Christian Human Rights, that such concepts as human dignity and human rights before they inspired the slogans of mass movements and became central elements of contemporary international law after the Second World War, were rooted in the conservative Catholic tradition of thought. We should not forget this. And we must reroute these concepts into their native soil, remembering that the Catholic option is to articulate, firstly, what we are for and not what we are against. I see how reluctantly our Catholic bishops here in Ukraine are using such words as human rights, leaving them for the use by the professional human rights fighters. I can't agree with some of my Catholic brothers in the West and here in Ukraine also, when they are fiercely attacking liberal democracies. Speaking from the Eastern European context, it seems better to have liberal democracy than not to have it. Because within the liberal democracy, at least, there is a possibility to find a way for articulating of your position. And it is 
totally impossible if you don't have any tools to step into the public square. Of course, I'm not speaking on the different deviations or distortions within the liberal order when one and marginal worldview is becoming a totalitarian one. Uh, I want to put a very funny example. Uh, not so long ago, one brave man uh, from Germany, I think he, he was a Protestant, and he decided to move from Germany, um, from spiritless EU to Russia, maybe to Siberia, something like that. Uh, he moved back in one month. Uh, I think uh, he now understands very well that in liberal democracies, human dignity means a little bit more than in very blessed and uh, spiritual uh, Siberia. Um, in some way, I understand the fear of our bishops about using human rights vocabulary. Because here we come to another extreme that is also articulated in our theme. I mean the populism, which can be not only of political nature, but also of a religious. Religious populism, like a political one, is proposing a highly valuable and desirable product, in our case salvation, for the lowest price. Again, in our case, moral and ethical price. Today we can meet such religious populism on the different levels of church being. And in some way, Rod Dreher is right when he states that churches today, in today's world, serve as a chaplaincy to the consumerist culture. But I am again thinking that it will be not quite good to follow the Dreher's pessimistic path. Because Catholic option doesn't mean to choose between this or that. Such simplification is a product of rather secular culture than it is a part of the Catholic tradition. In many discussions in our church today, we are experiencing the radicalization of different positions that presupposes that one should choose between right or left. This division is amplified by the secular media. As Cardinal Gerhard Ludwig Müller recently noted, that every newly ordained bishop is tested by the media at the first press conference and labeled conservative or liberal. In conclusion, the Catholic option, all or alternative today would be a placing of all concepts like human rights or human dignity in their original context, both on the intellectual level, and it will be the task for the Catholic universities, and on the practical level of wider church being. Church should be a sign to the world where all these concepts find their appropriate practical expressions and do not contradict each other as we often see uh, it within the liberal, liberal culture. Um, I think we are really good in reforming different structures after the Second Vatican Council. But I think what, we sh what should be reformed is our relations uh, within the Church. Of course, we must avoid a religious populism, not because one can be saved by his efforts, but because the price of our salvation is really high, a precious blood of our Lord. The end of the sermon. Yeah? <laughs>